Hey everyone, wanted to welcome you to the Thompson Research Center Field Day. Today I'm going to be talking to you about hair shedding EPDs and the work that we've done at the University of Missouri and uh, Thompson Research Center to make that possible. So back in 2016, my group received a $3 million grant from the USDA to look at matching cow's genetics to her environment. And the reason that the USDA was interested in researching this is various environmental stressors cost the US beef industry over a billion dollars each year. And a big part of that is heat stress. One of the ways that heat stress is, is observed or, or is influenced in the beef industry is by hair shedding. When we're talking about hair shedding, we're talking about that cow getting rid of her dense winter coat and replacing it with a summer coat. This is a simple system that is a one to five scoring system. Typically for Missouri herds, we think about scoring that herd sometime in the month of May, and we wanna score as many cows as possible uh, in a single day so that we have a very large contemporary group in which to make our comparisons. To learn more about hair shedding, you can check out the fact sheet on um, the Extension website, and I've provided the link here. So let's talk about hair shedding scoring. It's a, like I said, it's a simple system. Here's a picture of a hair shedding score five cow. What we can see on this cow is she's got dead winter hair over her entire body. She's got winter head on her head, winter hair on her head, on her neck, uh, over her entire body. She hasn't shed off any hair yet. Seeing these types of cows are, are relatively rare. A much more common score will be scores of four, three, and two. A hair shedding score of four means that that cow has started to shed off her winter hair and she shed off about 25% of that dead winter hair. On this cow here, you can see that she's start to shed off and, and she doesn't have winter hair on her neck. Typically on these cows, we tend to see them shed from the front to the back and from the top to the bottom. Here's a cow that's a hair shedding score of three. You'll see that she shed off on her neck, uh, shed off on her shoulder, shed off on her rump. And so she's, she's about halfway through of shedding off that dead winter hair. Here's an example of a hair shedding score two. Uh, this cow has shed off a lot of hair, but we still see some of that dead winter hair on her, on her belly. Typically for these hair shedding score two cows, we'll see dead winter hair on their flank, their lower quarter, and the bottom uh, of, their, of their rib cage, bottom of their belly. A hair shedding score of one means that that cow is 100% shed off. She doesn't have any more winter hair left on her body. And these cows are obviously the most desirable, desirable because they're prepared to deal with the heat and humidity that's coming in the summer. Now, in terms of timing, like I said, we want to do that hair shedding scoring in May, we also want to do it at a time where the average cow in our herd is a hair shedding score of three. Hair coat and hair shedding are not the same trait. Hair coat is a measure of how, how short and smooth the summer hair is. That's not what we're looking at with a hair shedding score. With a hair shedding score, we're simply measuring how much of the winter hair that cow has shed off. So why do we look at hair shedding? Like I mentioned earlier, it has a, a big influence on the heat tolerance of those cows. If that cow is still wear, wearing her winter coat around all summer long, she's going to be hot, she's going to be miserable, and she's going to be less productive. We see that re, reduced re, uh, productivity of the cow in terms of those late shedding cows tend to wean off a lighter calf. She's simply uh, putting less energy towards raising that calf. The other impact that we think that hair shedding scoring, that hair shedding has is 
earlier shedding cows tend to have better fertility. They tend to have older calves because they've calved earlier in the breeding season. So this February, uh, the Angus Genetics Incorporated released a research hair shedding EPD. Uh, this was data from our USDA funded project and it was also data from Mississippi State and North Carolina State from funding from the Angus Foundation. We combined these two data sets and so that represented 14,465 scores from 8,642 cattle. Hair shedding is a, a moderately or, or highly heritable trait. 40% of the variation in hair shedding is due to genetic differences with the other 60% coming from management, environment, other sources. The genetic prediction, the DNA prediction for hair shedding is very accurate with a prediction accuracy of 0.7, uh, which is very good, very comparable to the prediction accuracies that we've seen for other traits in the Angus breed, where those prediction accuracies range from 0.6 to 0.7. There's more information about our research paper uh, on my blog about uh, this hair shedding development. And one of the things that was uh, really cool to me is in the research EPDs that were released by the Angus Association, many of those sires that have been used at the Thompson Research Center uh, produce very accurate EPDs because they have lots of cows, lots of daughters across the US. And some of that data came from the Thompson Research Center. So we can look at the uh, highest ranking bulls in terms of their daughters are predicted to be the earliest shedding. So here's the top five bulls. And, and they all have very small uh, hair shedding EPDs. For hair shedding, just like the score is one to five, with one being more desirable, for the hair shedding EPD, a smaller number is going to be more desirable. Here's the worst five bowls, the bottom five bowls in that initial uh, Angus uh, data release. And so these bowls all have larger hair shedding EPDs. So how do we actually use this EPD in practice? Let's go through a brief example. Let's assume that in May of, of 2021, we go to the Thompson Research Center, and there we have a whole bunch of daughters out of SAV net worth 4,200, okay? His hair shedding EPD uh, published by Angus Genetics Incorporated is 1.17. Let's say on that day in May in 2021, the average of his daughters is a hair shedding score of three. Okay, let's assume that on that same day, we also uh, collect hair shedding scores on a large group of cows who are sired by Hoover Dam. Okay, Hoover Dam's EPD is 0 0.22. So there's nearly a one point difference between net worth's hair shedding EPD and Hoover Dam's hair shedding EPD. What that would lead us to expect is that those Hoover Dam cows would have hair shedding scores that were one point lower than the net worth cows. And so that's what we show here on this bottom graph is if the average of the net worth daughters is a three, then the average of the uh, Hoover Dam daughters is gonna be a two. And the other thing that, that I wanna point out from this graph is of those Hoover Dam daughters, very few of them are gonna have a hair shedding score of four or five. We've really moved that distribution, that bell curve towards earlier shedding, okay? That's how we'll use a hair shedding EPD in the beef industry is simply in hot, humid environments to select for those cows using the EPD that shed earlier in the spring and are ready to deal with the heat and humidity that is coming. 
Some of the impacts that we've had in that grant, obviously we're, we're very excited about and very proud about this new EPD that's been released to the beef industry. As part of this project, we also have uh, data from about 12,000 cows with 35,000 records that represent 11 different breeds of cattle. And so we'll publish that data as well. And there'll be data for the entire beef industry for 11 different breeds in the beef industry to use to generate a hair shedding EPD. As part of this research project for any of the collaborating herds, they got free genomic tests uh, for 11,000 animals. So they got free genomic enhanced EPDs for all of the cows that participated in the project. From some of our other research uh, in this project, we've helped prioritize DNA variants that go on industry DNA tests. So that's been a, a brief collaboration with Neogen. And then of course, we're also creating these uh, first past uh, prototype uh, echo region specific genomic predictions. So this is a set of EPDs. Uh, basically the EPDs that we've been looking at are birth weight, weaning weight, and yearling weight and milk that are tailored to specific regions across the US. So what this would mean, instead of looking at EPDs from a national cattle evaluation, we would look at EPDs specific to the fescue belt. So we're really excited about uh, translating this research into economic impacts for uh, beef producers. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Probably the best way to get a hold of me is, is by phone. You can also reach out to me uh, through social media and uh, appreciate your participation in the presentation today. Thank you.